Hi, so we're going to go over a quick numerical calculation in GlowScript. Uh, I'm starting with this picture right here to show you the basic idea. So here I have uh, some object at position 1 and here it is at, at position 2. And so I, I have those vector R1 and R2. Um, and of course there's some force acting on this so the momentum changes from P1 to P2 also. So we want to find out really after some time interval, after some short time interval, where's, where's the ball at and what's the momentum? We want to find, starting with R1 and P1, find R2 and P2. So first right here, we have the momentum principle. So that's what this is right here. This says that um, the final momentum is the initial momentum plus F net delta T. So we're going to use that later on. Okay, But it's important to know where that comes from and why we have that. Now here's the key to numerical calculations. To find position 2, we're going to say it's approximately equal to the first position and use P2 over M as the average velocity times delta T. Now that's not true. Okay, There's a P1 and P2 are going to be different. I just calculated them up here. But if this time interval right here, DT, delta T is small, then there's not going to be that big of a difference and this will work okay. Okay, so this is one way to do numerical calculations. Of course, there are better, more sophisticated ways, but let's just get started. Okay, so how do we do this in GlowScript? Okay, I'm going to go kind of fast because I don't want this program to run forever. So in GlowScript, it's like Python and I can make a ball and I'm going to say it's at uh, starts at zero at the origin just because I can and it's going to have a radius of whatever you want um, let's say two point I said two point zero two zero two yeah and a color but I'm not going to leave that in there let's just run it so you can see how it works if you haven't seen GlowScript before it gives you this 3D environment where you can uh, manipulate after you run it uh, things in a 3D way it, it does all that for you okay so I want to put down some initial things like the mass ball dot m equals two point this is a ping pong ball two point seven times ten to the negative third um, I need the initial velocity ball dot v equals um, let's say it's thrown at an angle and I'll give it five six zero just making up stuff here. Uh, now I need the momentum, ball dot p. It's just going to be ball dot m times ball dot v. Uh, so this dot stuff, if I have the object ball, I can just add these other attributes on the end of it with a dot. And it's an easy way to keep track of your variables uh, in cases like this. I'm going to need some other things, the gravitational field. Uh, I need time. This time starts off at zero, and the time step, I'm going to use 0 0.01. Okay, we're ready. So let's um, do the same calculation. Calculate the new momentum and calculate the new position after this short time interval and just keep repeating those uh, calculations. So I'm going to say while ball.pos.y greater than or equal to zero. Okay, this says run the calculations until the ball gets back down to where it started. So the first thing I want to do is calculate the momentum. I might have to calculate the force if that ever changed. But in this case, the force is not changing. So I'm going to say uh, ball.p equals ball.p pl uh, plus ball.m times g times dt. So this ball.m times g is the gravitational force. Now this ball dot p is the new momentum and this ball dot p is the old momentum. This is not an algebraic equation. This is an assigned equation. This says make the ball momentum equal to what it was before plus ball dot m times dt. Now I need to do the same thing for the position ball dot pos equals ball dot pos plus ball dot p divided by ball dot m, that's the average velocity, times dt. Now I need to do the same thing for the time, update the time, oops, plus. 
And one other thing up here, I need to tell the program how fast to run it. So if I put rate 100, it does no more than 100 calculations a second. Okay, so just to show that we actually do something, I'm gonna print after, in Python, which is, this is essentially what it is, everything that's indented here is in this while loop. And so by putting this print back dedented, then it's not. So this will be, uh, I'm gonna print out the time. And I'm gonna run it. Okay, so the, the picture looks weird because it's zooming and stuff. But here is the time, 1.2 seconds. So that is your very first program. So you can play around with it. I'll make some more later, but there you go.